Chapter 2 I entered the house and went to the fire, holding my hands out to it. It was a cold May night. People were standing around the fire. An old woman came up with tea. You look tired, she said. Have some tea. I started laughing. It seemed so funny. I had travelled so far to see her, and she was dead and they offered me tea. Everyone backed away from me, but I couldn't stop laughing. Then someone touched my shoulder and took me to a dark room. They lit a lamp, sat me down, and sat opposite me. The room was plain, with simple chairs and tables. I stopped laughing and looked seriously at the woman. I was Miss Ida's nurse, she said. She asked me to call you. Who are you? Her husband. The woman looked at me with tough eyes, full of big surprise and anger. Then may God forgive you, she said. What you did, I don't know, but even he will find it hard to forgive you. Tell me, I asked my wife. Tell you, she spoke with such bitter anger, but it didn't hurt me. I already felt so bad about myself. Yes, I'll tell you. Your wife was so ashamed of you, she never even said she was married. She'd rather let me think anything than tell me that. She came here and said, Nurse, please take care of me, I'm in big trouble, and don't let them know where I am, and because I'm happily married to a good man, I could help her. Why didn't you call me sooner? I cried out, feeling so much pain. I wouldn't have called you. It was her idea. Young man, I don't know what you did to her, but it must have been very bad. She loved you so much. She used to sit and look at your photo, talk to it, kiss it, and cry a lot. She used to cry all night. And when I told her to pray for help, she showed me your picture and said, that's my God, nurse. Don't, I said weakly, trying to stop her words. Not any more, not now. Don't, she repeated. She was walking back and forth, very upset. Don't really. No, I won't, but I'll never forget you. I used to pray for you, thinking you were just her boyfriend. Now I know you were her husband whom you left, and she missed you so much. I pray God makes you suffer like she did. You took her life. You'll have to pay for everything you did to her. She was very angry as she walked past me. I stood there, biting my lip so hard I tasted blood. She was nothing to you, the woman yelled, walking faster. You didn't love her, so you don't feel anything now. But one day, when you love someone... You'll understand how she felt, if there's any fairness in heaven. I got up, walked across the room, and leaned against the wall. I heard her, but I didn't really understand. Can't you feel anything? Are you made of stone? Come and see her lying there so peacefully. She's not sad about you any more. She won't sit looking out the window, crying quietly. Come and see her. See what you did to her. And then you can leave. Nobody wants you here. She doesn't want you now. Maybe you want to see her buried first. I bet you'll put a big stone on her grave to make sure she doesn't come back. I turned to her. Her face was white with sadness and anger. Her hands were tight. Woman, I said, please have mercy. She stopped and looked at me. Ah, she said. Have mercy, I repeated. Mercy? You should have thought of that earlier. You had no mercy on her. She loved you and died loving you. If I weren't a Christian, I'd kill you for it, like the rat you are. I would, even if it meant I had to be punished. I grabbed her hands and held them tight, even though she tried to pull away. 
Don't you understand? I said angrily. We loved each other. She died loving me. I have to live loving her. And you feel sorry for her. It was all a big, stupid mistake. Please take me to her and let me be alone with her. She hesitated, then spoke a little softer. All right, come with me. We went towards the door. As she opened it, I heard a faint cry. My heart stopped. What's that? I asked, standing at the door. Your child, she said simply. That too. Oh, my love, all these months. She always said she'd call you when her trouble was over, the woman said as we went upstairs. I want him to see our baby, she said. It'll be okay when the baby's born. He'll come then. You'll see. I didn't say anything. I didn't think you'd come if she was just someone you left, and I couldn't believe you were her husband and stayed away from her. She took out a key and unlocked a door. We entered a large dark room with old furniture. There were candles and a smell of lavender. The big bed was covered in white. My lamb, my poor girl, the woman said, crying as she pulled back the sheet. Doesn't she look beautiful? I stood by the bed and looked at my wife's face. It looked like she slept next to me in the morning. She didn't look dead. Her lips were still red, and it seemed there was color in her cheeks. I thought if I kissed her, she would wake up, hug me, and we could talk and cry together. I kissed her, but her lips were cold, and she didn't wake up. She won't ever wake up now. Again, some things are too hard to write. End of chapter 2